So you want to appreciate them. Thank you. So my point is, a lot of us have left our children to the society in search of what we call bread. Maybe we not go to Egypt to look for bread and come back to see that our children are no longer there. That's what is happening. Now, if we want to raise godly seed, in this perverse, it is perverse because there's a lot of things that are happening. Children are losing it because parents have lost it. I don't know if you got that. Children are losing it because parents have lost it. I remember I took it from helplessness too. We have a lot of children that don't even have their parents around them, even if the parents are there. So if you must raise God, this, if you must understand the one that has given us the seed. We pray a lot, my husband and I, we try to pray, say, God, give us the grace to raise the seed. Because it's the one that will give the grace. And so I woke up this morning knowing that I had appointments, including for um, uh, um, Brad Tyler's appointments. I had the program, I had to go speak with Dr. Vito to say, can I move it here so that I can just speak into it? I finished, I think Pastor, I met Pastor and saying a bit of that when it comes to ministry. It's part of what God has put in our hands, right? So I have to give it my best to make sure that whatever it is that they have contacted me for is well and good. But when I finished, I knew I had a parenting role to play. So I had to rush back home to play that show before coming to this place. But we have a lot of prayer. Now it is in this context. In other contexts, we have parents that do not go back to play the role they are supposed to play, even when they have had a busy life. So if we must raise a godly sin in this kind of generation, the first thing we have to do is to get connected to the one that has given us the seed. Mm -hmm. And we cannot overemphasize on that. My husband and I say that a lot. In fact, when he uses, you know, Carl likes to use the, the analogy of the seed. And you don't plant a seed without consulting the one that has given you the seed. So you know the kind of seed he has gifted you. So we need to get connected to the one that has given the seed and then recognize that seed that he has given to us. In this age and time, our seed is going through contention. The devil is contending with our seed. You don't understand when Dr. 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 Peter was saying it. He, he, he was nice today, I was, he was nice saying it. The contention is high. The devil is really contending with our seed. And so if we get connected to the one that has given us the seed, and we understand the kind of seed we have, and we understand the contention, the weed around the seed, it will help us cultivate better. It will help us know what to care and what to need. So I would like to say that let us pay a lot of attention to the seeds that we have. We have children that, <laughs> even, even the language we are using these days is alarming. It's amazing. And parents are not aware. Parents are, are living in, in a very busy life. Recognize the kind of seed you have, know the one that has gifted you, and then let us have time with our children. Who raises a godly seed without spending time with them? And spending time with them is not all because you can be in the midst of your children and be absent. I had to cure myself when the way my daughter told me, say, Mommy, you're not listening to me. Something happened recently, and I was taking me from another concert. In fact, I was almost embarrassed. And the next day she told me, Mommy, because you didn't listen to me. And I said, but I heard something. You, you were not listening. You were not listening. Yes, I was. And so I had to learn to say that it is one thing to be there with our children. It's another thing to be listening to them, to listen to them. Because it is when you listen, you are aware of the kind of seed that has been sown. Some of us are not listening, so we are not uh, opportuned to experience the seed they have inside of them. And I'm saying this to those that are even parents and those that are intended to be parents. Let us spend quality and present time with our children. Present because we can be there and absent. That was why I said quality and present time. Quality because you can be there, you can be present yet not listening to them. If we spend enough time with our children, education can also take place. I see some, some things that my children do now and it helps me draw the next curriculum. I don't prepare curriculum ahead. It's real-time curriculum. Mm. So I went to speak somewhere, and the people said they wanted to see my whole curriculum. I said I will give you something, but there are some things I cannot give you, because it's after I have this session with the children. I will know what to do the next time. You should appreciate it because it is more work for me. Mm. It is more work for me. I could have also gone to you with something I did two years ago. I know of someone that has been doing something he did many years ago. And I'm like, well, the children have changed. The artist they were listening to then is not the same that they are listening to now. In fact, the artist they listen to now, even you get better to listen to them. You dance to their the, the songs. You do the, 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 the competition. The other day in my place of prayer, I even had myself holding my head to war. And I told you, I said, in my very spiritual state, this thing is coming to my head. The only good thing is that it has a bit of love because I like 
get love. <laughs> I, just, I just excuse myself spiritually. I said, because I'm married, I can listen to this. Well, how can they excuse themselves? That's the thing. So I do real time. When I listen to them, I know what to teach next. I know what to include. I know that, okay, this my daughter is doing something. I'm, no, no, that, that doesn't mean it will not form our next devotion. I feel like the last time. This was what you did. That's why we have brain. That's what I've gotten from God. <laughs> I mean, that's why we have brain. They will know how to use the things we have gotten from this. Look, I'm telling you, I'm giving you back your medicine and you are not aware. So that you can give me the, the next time. Because if you don't do it with wisdom, the next time they won't talk again. But please, my friend, I said, you round up. I don't count this to people talking. It's mine saying so we are not going to waste time. So, <laughs> so please, I want to appeal to us to spend a lot of time with our children. That's when we get um, to raise them better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you. I mean, she's, she said it all. I want to use. Okay, sorry. Um, Sorry, I don't talk like my wife. I have notes. <laughs> so she, I have notes too. Okay, so she's uh, her notes are in her brain, so she's very spontaneous. So I um I have uh, about five minutes, so I'll just quickly quickly share with us um, a couple of things. Um, so we're talking about how to raise a, raise a godly seed in a perverse uh, generation. Um, so the, the key word here is godly. Um, so it means that um, it means that it can be you can raise a seed that is not godly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it, the difference now is that the seed is godly. So you can you can raise a seed. A seed can be raised sometimes because of the principle of the seed or the miracle of the seed, sometimes you don't even have to be deliberate about it, it will grow. Mm, yeah? yeah? You don't yeah. even pay attention, the seed will grow. But what we are talking about now is the intentionality of making sure that it is godly. And an ungodly person cannot raise a godly seed. So I think that's where you started from. So it is absolutely, and that's why you know I always you know appreciate Doc for or what he's doing. So, first of all, as parents, we cannot shy away and say we want to raise godly children, and then we are lying. We are displaying characteristics and values that don't align. I mean, it's just hypocrisy. You can take them to the best schools, but if your life also does not align as a godly life, then it, it, it totally, you know, takes away everything you want to do. That's, that's hypocrisy. So if we are talking about raising a godly seed, then it starts with us. Are we godly ourselves? Are we mirror? Because fatherhood or parenting is mentorship. God can as, as well drop children, but he allows everybody to go through a family because of the mentorship that goes through parenting. It, it is intentional. So. If the parents themselves are not godly, then you know it's it's just um, being hypo hypocritical. Um, so I'll just run through a couple of things I wrote down here. So raise a seed that is godly. You must identify the seed. Not all seeds are the same. You might have rice, but there's a different variation to the type of rice. So you might have five children, but they are not the same. They have their different seeds. So as much as you say, oh, um, we know, understand from agriculture that loamy soil is good. But some type of rice grown in the swamp, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So it means that if I plant that seed, even in the best of soils, I won't get the best of results yeah. if it's not in a swampy right. location. So the first thing as the parent is to understand what seed you've been given. And it's, 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 I mean, you know, God works in this. Every time God sends an intervention as a child, he tells the people, the parents, or he gives an instruction about who he's sending. So that you don't mistake it. You know, you don't start, you know, when Jesus was coming, there was clarity yeah. who was coming, what he was coming to do. 
So even as parents, you don't just have children. When you're having children, I think the responsibility is, God, what is, what is this one for? You know? And then once you have clarity, then that is some level of understanding you'll see. And then it will help you in planting that seed. Because you can't plant corn the same way you plant uh, rice, really. Even though you have that, the same farmer, you have the same land, but where you plant your corn is different from where you plant because of the understanding of the seed you have. So it's absolutely very important. Now, like I said, yeah, thank you. So once you understand your seed, you understand the environment, you understand the temperature, you understand, you know, if you need a greenhouse, you understand how to water them. Some children need more watering. Some people, some people say, ah, I grew up, when we were growing up, nobody did that. Yes, because of the seed you, you, you the kind of seed you wear. But there are some other seeds that cannot go through that yeah. temptation or that trial. So you need to water them. So obviously you need to understand um, all of that. Then it's also very important that you understand that every seed needs external stimulation. I mean, we were taught photosynthesis, right? So this, the plant will always move in the direction of sunlight. So it means that even if I'm in this room, if this place is dark, the plant will grow towards the direction of the light. Which means that if you don't stimulate them, someone external will stimulate them. So it is important. Don't say, oh, the child is growing in a Christian house. But you are not stimulating the child in a Christian way. The child will be, the, so the plant will be in a Christian house, but the, the mouth will go through the window to look for stimulus. Yeah, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So sometimes because we are carried away and say, oh, the child is a Christian, you know, your father is a pastor, so you are growing in a Christian house. But the behavior is different because there is a stimuli that the child is responding to. So we need to be there. I think that's one of the things you were talking about, right? Yeah. Then please, let us not be distracted by the weed. Every time a farmer goes to plant, the weeds will come up unsolicited. Um, Focus on your seed, not on the weed. You see, when, uh, you know, the last time I came, you know, I talked about darkness. That darkness doesn't need time to appear. While we are here, there's already darkness. Once the light goes off, you already know. Darkness will just come. Focus on shining the light. The weed will always come up. When you focus too much on the weed, you take your eyes off the seed. The primary assignment is the seed. The primary assignment is the seed. You know, I was I was watching a a, 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 a teaching by T D Jakes, and you know that day it caught my curiosity. Just asking when the the, the disciples, I think there was a I forgot the place in scripture where he said that you know while men slept, yeah, right? Yeah. And for me, I just kept asking my spirit, why did Jesus say? Say what he said. He didn't say they should clear. He said they should wait till harvest. Mm. So why did he take his eyes on the fact that the weed was growing? And what T.D. Jakes said, which was for me, was quite liberating. He said because by the time you try to take out the weed, the weed entangles with the seed. And there is a tendency of uprooting the seed abnormally before it's time. But when the seed is fully mature, even when you take out the weed and the seed, the corn is already mature. So at that time, it doesn't do so much potential damage. That's why, you know, he was talking about the habit. So for me, I think, you know, like I said, let's focus on the seed and, you know, not on the weed. And I just wanted to add this part because a lot of us do not pay attention about even when you are raising a godly seed. As parents, we forget that there is a harvest. There is a time to let go. As parents, sometimes we forget to realize that there is a time that you need to let go. Yeah? If a, if a plant stays too much on the tree, it becomes a rotten, a rotten apple. Yeah? So there is a time to harvest as a farmer and let go of the seed. Trusting in the process and trusting in 
in your investment in that plan. Which is, 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 is that capacity because if you, if you know you've done so much that it, that trust lets go because if you hold too much it's either the, the seed falls off the tree or gets rotten and, but you should know when to let go. It is, it is also another thing that you know most parents don't uh, consciously pay attention to and you know at that point you know they start even having problems with the, a fully mature seed. They are still training it as a um, it's a it's a it's a it's a small um, young city. So thank you. I know my time is up. I know you've been covering coughing and coughing. <laughs> thank you for thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sound amen. amen. Because I'm a drummer. You know, I tell people instrumentalists are the first to get to heaven because a trumpeter is an instrumentalist. God will need an instrumentalist to blow the trumpet and before others will begin to come. Amen. amen. So treat your instrumentalists well because they will be in heaven before you. Amen. amen. Praise God. Now, uh, final word for this session that we should strive all that we can to ensure that every child around us goes to school. Because the mind of a child is a very dangerous tool if left on its own. We have seen what we can do. We have seen what our fathers have done. Or what these people coming behind us can do. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it gone into the heart of man. The kind of inventions, both good and bad, there are some areas of your phone that your child can enter. That you've been holding that phone for a long time, but you may not know. In fact, I saw one book with my two sons, and I saw my password. They were practicing the password. The password, the password, the password, the password. The password, the password. I, the password was correct. They practiced it for a whole page. So that means they are mine. <laughs> my own password. <laughs> that means their mind is is running millions of years ahead of our own. Mm. So it would be good for us if we, like Tim Carla said, if we channel that mind in a positive direction. Whatever we can do to ensure that every child around us has access to good and quality education, may God empower us to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank, you, sir. Thank you for that last word on this section. Also, permit me, let's put hands together for Tim Eleshi for their last statement on this section for today. Thank you so much. Can we keep clapping on the front? Thank you so much. Okay, for, for us, like we said before, every home is under attack. So know the God that created us and created the family. So we have to go back to God and stay in Him and groom our children in the Lord as well. Because no matter what we do, the generations after us should do better than we've done. And it's in knowing God and serving God. Praise God. Amen. Uh, uh, 2023 is a um, few days time. Yes. 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 yes, sir. Yes. Go and do great wonders. Amen. And don't forget the home is the foundation. Amen. So don't plan everything and forget planning for your family. Mm -hmm. Spend some time 
think about it. Lord, what will I do differently? Start with the goals they write us. Yes, start with the goals they write us. What would I do differently? Yeah. To, to make sure that 2023, I have a beautiful father. Yes, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, it's actually called Jesus Church. You know, so Jesus started with prayer and what? And handed the prayer. And before I call on um, uh, one of our facilitators, uh, Mr. Carl, I hope I pronounce this well this yes, time around. So I quickly want to, you know, do the vote of thanks on behalf of the hosts. They were involved in a, an urgent, uh, an uh, urgent assignment, and that is why they are not here. That is uh, Adebu Suyi and uh, Temi Titi Layo Olumadewa. So I'm going to speak on their behalf to say thank you for every one of you watching us on the YouTube and also uh, Instagram live online right away. And don't forget our website is wildlife.tv. So on their behalf, I say thank you so much. My name is Wale Ajikini Amokuna, also a partner to this organization. So without wasting time, can we call on Mr. Kao for closing prayer? Thank you. Thank you. Can we just uh, rise? Uh, we... Father, we thank you. We thank you for for your grace and your mercy. Because no man can ascribe this to themselves. And, you know, at the end of it, we pray that you will take all the glory. We take all the honor. We thank you for, for all the facilitators. We thank you for all the people joining online. We thank you for the convenience of this program. We thank you. We thank you. We just want to say thank you. Thank you for a conducive atmosphere. Thank you for everything that has worked smoothly. Thank you for the lives that are being transformed. Thank you for the lives that will be transformed when you watch. We just want to say thank you. We pray that as we go, that your presence will go with us. Amen. Your spirit will overshadow us. Amen. And that your mercy will speak through us. Amen. For those that have been recharged, Father, we ask that the grace and the capacity to do, to do, the action required to do, we ask that you give us what? For the mighty name of Jesus. Those that need their faith to be enlarged by the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, everybody, once again. Thank you so much for coming to the program today. All right. So can we all come together? Pause the facilitator to take a group picture while others also join us to take a picture together. All right. Thank you.